Hello, I'm Everett Anthony, a volunteer here at First Baptist Church Temple, Texas. Six months ago, I could not imagine that we would be doing a Bible study through the internet, but here we are today. I want you to know that I deeply miss all of you who were in the Bible class here at church. Your support, your encouragement, your prayers and laughter all meant much to me, and I'm sure that these same ideas resonate with many of you who may be listening to this study today. With the crisis that we're in, it was decided that speaking on the subject of hope would be helpful. Hope is the desire accompanied by expectation of or the belief that it will be fulfilled. For several years, I served as a mentor and consultant for the churches across the country. One of the things that I did was to visit those congregations on a weekend and spend time with them, interviewing them, evaluating their ministries and how they were doing church. And after that was completed, I came home and sat down and reflected on the data that had been gathered over the weekend and spent time praying about what I would say to this congregation. After that time of reflection and prayer, I sat down and wrote a letter to the pastor stating that which I found that, were, that was encouraging in the congregation. And then the latter part of that letter were proposed recommendations that how they might improve their ministry to their community. I think that is what is happening in the book of Romans when Paul, who is now in Corinth and writing to the church in Rome. He had heard about the church, but had never visited it. He wanted to go there, recognizing that if he was going to be a missionary for the world, he needed to go to the largest city of the known world. And so he writes to this small, struggling congregation to bring hope to them in Rome. And with that as a background of what we want to look at, would you open your Bibles to Romans, the fifth chapter, and look at verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Paul writes this letter, having never been there, as I've mentioned already, but hopefully, that they would be encouraged in this time as he wrote them. And when we think about Romans, there are some things that he wants to say to them. He wants to talk to them and recognize that everyone is a sinner. Everyone is broken and needs the hope of Jesus Christ. He recognizes that we have all missed our perfection. We are all flawed. Justification, as he mentions in this uh, text, is the door of salvation. Forgiveness is the restoration of our relationship with Christ. But in this text, let's look at the text again. He said we've been justified through faith, but we also have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The person who have been justified by faith are those who are privileged to experience peace in a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Again and again, peace is used to describe the strong serenity which believes, believers receive from God and from God alone. Paul writes in Romans 15, 13, the same thing he says, the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing. He goes on to say that the kingdom of God means righteousness and peace and joy through the Holy Spirit. Paul puts on a lot of emphasis upon peace. He begins several of his letters by using these words, grace, mercy, and peace to all of you. This word peace suggests two metaphors which can be described its effects. In Philippians 4, 7, peace is a soldier who stands 
guard over the hearts and thoughts of believers. With all of the struggles of our society, the soldier stands guard to guard your heart and mine from the turbulent struggles of which we are facing in the coronavirus issue in America today. In Colossians 3.15, persons are called into peace with Christ, which rules or arbitrates in the heart. Both of these images, that inner peace, which is one of God's gifts to those who commit themselves to trust in him. Peace means more than all of this. It is a sum of all spiritual blessings that man receives and experiences. It is grace and its fruit realization. This piece points to the fundamental tension running through all of our life and extending to our relations with all things, which is dealt with only when God reconciles us to himself. It was Jesus who told his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. But there's another word in this text that we want to look at. It is the word access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. We have access to God. Look at that word. It suggests that we have the right to enter. Several years ago, I was invited to go to Yemen to lead a conference for evangelical Christian leaders and talk about how that they might impact a Muslim country and a Muslim city with the gospel of Christ. I spent a year in preparation for that event. And the, and the church that I was a member of at that time on a mission trip, always there had to be one, at least two people going on a trip. That was for support, encouragement, and prayer time as they were there. So we prepared to leave on that October evening. Uh, his wife and my wife uh, drove us to the airport, but before we got there, we had time for a meal. And so we stopped near the airport to have dinner with our spouses before leaving for 10 to 15 days. We went in, had a lovely meal, and when we came out, we discovered that something tragic had happened. Someone had crushed the window of the car that we were in and reached in and picked up my uh, briefcase, and in that briefcase was my passport, my visa, and all of the preparation that I had prepared for a year for to lecture and to leave in Yemen. What would we, what were we to do? We went on over to the airport and they said to us, sir, we could get you a, uh, a ticket. By the way, in that uh, briefcase was my ticket for the trip as well. And then they said to me, but sir, you do not have a passport. You cannot go, you cannot get on a plane. Well, that is the idea of talking about access. When we have, when we are followers of Jesus Christ, we have access to the Heavenly Father, access to pray, to access to communicate with Him, access in order that we may have a relationship with Him. During this time when we are sequestered because of the coronavirus, we don't have access to human relationship personally. Oh, we can pick up the phone and we can talk, but we don't get to see you. We don't even get to shake your hand. We don't even get able to give you a, a hug. We don't have that access, but I want you to know, Paul is writing to this young Christian church at Rome and saying, you have access to the Heavenly Father and you have access 24 hours a day. Yes, it is important that we have access. What a rich blessing in this turbulent time to know that we have access to the Father and that his grace is extended to us as we have access to this game and to the experiences of the Lord Jesus. But there's another word in this text that I want us to look at. 
Look at it again. Let's go back and say, we're justified through faith, and we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. We have access into it. And not only that, we are able to rejoice. Look at the benefits that Paul has been expressing. We're justified by faith. We have peace with God. Now we have access with his grace. And now then we get to rejoice. Again, coming back to the era and to the dynamic in which we're facing in our world. There's not a lot of rejoicing. But through Jesus Christ, we can rejoice that we have all of these benefits through the Lord Jesus. Access with his grace, we rejoice. It is time to celebrate. It is time to express thanksgiving. It is time to bow our knees and give thanks unto the Heavenly Father for these marvelous, marvelous gifts. Peace and rejoice. I don't know about you, but when I open the scriptures and read words like this that Paul is writing to this young congregation in Rome, it brings a sense of celebration and rejoicing in my heart. And I hope that it will do the same for you as you listen to this, as we think about these benefits of the Lord Jesus. But there is something more that I want to say. Paul says, not only do we have access to grace and the Lord Jesus, and we rejoice, but we also have hope for the glory of of God. There is even more. There is hope for this. It is hope for eternal life through Jesus Christ. My friend, when we face turbulent and difficult, challenging times, these words bring inspiration and joy to us. Anne Sentis tells a story of Betty who is the owner of a house cleaning service and who was always searching for new clients to build for her business. One day she was looking for new clients and she knocked on the door of a house. And when the door, when the lady opened the door of the house, she introduced herself and what she was there and she was looking for new clients to clean a house. And the lady standing in the door said, I'm sorry, but I'm not able to afford that now for I'm undergoing cancer treatment. Right then, Debbie decided that no one undergoing cancer treatment would ever be turned away. They would even be offered a free household cleaning service. So in 2005, she started a nonprofit organization where companies donated their cleaning services to women battling cancer. One such woman felt a rush of confidence when she came home to a clean house and said, for the first time, I actually believed that I could conquer cancer. A feeling of being cared for and supported can help sustain us when we're facing a challenge such as the coronavirus. An awareness of God's presence and support can especially bring hope to encourage our spirit. Psalm 46, is a favorite of many people going through trials. It reminds us, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. And be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord God Almighty is with us. My friends today, as we come to the conclusion of this brief Bible study, I hope that you recognize again as we review for a moment that through faith in Christ we are justified through Christ our Lord and that we have grace on which we is extended to us and then we get to rejoice in Christ Jesus but more than that we have hope in these troubled difficult challenging times my friends may that be your blessing today please join me in Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words of Paul as he wrote to this young, struggling church 
in a difficult period of their lives. And as we bring that to us, we also cling to those same promises that he has given to us today here in the 21st century. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have drawn near us and that we celebrate that we're justified through faith and that you have extended to us your grace and mercy and peace. And oh Lord, yes, hope. Hope for the future. Hope for a day in which we're able to come and join together as a congregation once again to celebrate your great gifts of worship and of singing and joy and experience the relationship one with the other. To this end, O oh Lord, we give you thanks today with this is our hope for tomorrow. In Jesus' name.